What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all here. Uh, your favorite AMP IA and part 147 instructor back with another video. And first I make must make an admission. It has been almost three weeks since I have posted a Wednesday upload. We have just been unrecognizably busy with so many things at the house and other things. I'm not making excuses for myself, um, but I've, I just haven't had time to get it to get in here in the in the avionics lab and actually make a video. But I wanted to remake a video because I've been getting a lot of the same questions uh, lately on some of my old catalog, if you will. So what this is about is getting your AMP to become an aircraft mechanic. Uh, some of my frequently asked questions, the couple different ways that you can do it, and some of this is going to be redundant and things that I've talked about in the past. But like I said. I want to cover it again. So if that interests you, stick around. So the first thing we need to understand is there are two main ways to do it. There are others that I will talk about, uh, but the two main ways to do it are first, going through a part 147 school. And I get a lot of people ask me the question, oh, I want to go here, I want to go there. How do I know if it's a part 147 school? And the, the answer is it should be on their website or it should be one of the things that they are stating to you. Um, for their criteria, if you will, that they are a 147 school. There are community colleges, there are private institutions, there are hundreds of them across the United States, and there's even multiple in some states. Like I know in the state of Texas where I'm at, there are multiple. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I never directly mention the school that I teach at uh, because it would just be a conflict as I am not a authorized representative of the school. They don't authorize me making these videos. They don't authorize me speaking on their behalf and all that as it is. But I do teach at a community college. I am in the state of Texas in the city of San Antonio. So there you go. Anyways, besides the point. The first way is, like I said, to go through a part 147 school. They range from hybrid to hybrid being online and in person to all in person. They range from 12 months to 19 months. It just depends on where you're at. Some schools, when the ACS change, took over, just redid their program exactly as it was and stuck with the 19 months or 18 months. Other schools shortened it way down and condensed it into like a 10 or 12 month program. So make sure you shop around, make sure you look at all the schools you want to go to. I always recommend that you take a tour of the different institutions and get, in, get a feel for what the place is like before you hand them your hard earned money to go to school there for your AMP. But once you have finished that 147 school, it qualifies you to take the airframe and power plant test, which I've talked about this in other videos, but that would be the three written tests, written test for your general, written test for your airframe, and written test for your power plant. And then of course the oral and practicals, an oral and practical for your general, an oral and practical for your airframe, and an oral and practical for your power plant. Now you have to get either an A or a P. You cannot just get the general test. So you will have to get at least an A. You don't have to get the P and you do have to get, or you could get a P, but you don't have to get the A. However, 99% of mechanics do get both. They get both the A and the P. The good news is, once you take the general test and the general oral and practical, you don't have to take it again. So if you take the airframe test while you're in school and you're already an A while you're in school, when you finish your power plant courses, all you have to do is take that power plant written and your power plant OMP and you're good to go, depending on how your school does the catalog or the schedule. The second most common way to do it is through 30 months of practical experience. Now, again, sorry, my nose itches. Uh, you have to get either an A or a P. So with 18 months, you can get just the A. With 18 months of practical experience working in a facility performing the duties of an A license, you can certify or you can get certified to test based on practical experience. And I put that in quotes because you have to apply at your local FISDO. You have to talk to uh, an airworthiness inspector at the local FISDO and he has to sign you off the test based on your practical experience. So he's going to want to see a resume, he's going to want to see job history, whatever it is, whatever documentation it is that you have to prove that you have been serving as an aircraft mechanic doing the things that an aircraft mechanic does. Okay, but you could use that practical experience. Um, that goes for all of my military guys too. I get that question a lot. If you're retired service and you were an Apache helicopter mechanic or you worked out on C5s, whatever it was, you may be able to get signed off the test based on practical experience because you did 15, 20 years in the Air Force. You shouldn't have to go through an entire 147 program again just to get your AMP so you can test based on practical experience. Now, like I said, it's 18 months for one rating, either the A or the P, and it is an additional 12 months for the other rating, either the A or the P. And I say that because if you're working at an engine shop, then you're probably gonna be getting the P. If you're working for like a major heavy structures repair, you're probably just gonna be getting the A, and it would be an additional 12 months of experience working on engines or airframe, whatever it is, to get the other certifications. 30 months total to go the practical experience route. 
Again, you can, you can qualify for that if you're retired military working in aviation in the military in some way or another. Now, there are some other ways to do it that I have mentioned before on the, on the channel, and I'm going to answer some questions about uh, legality of who can and who can't become an AMP and all that kind of stuff here in just a second, so stick around for that. Uh, but you could also go the route of getting an experimental aircraft builder certificate or repairman certificate and building an aircraft from scratch. And after 30 months of building that aircraft, you could certify or you could go the practical experience route and test for your AMP that way, which some people do, but it's really, really rare uh, that anyone would do it that way. But like I said, you can. Some places offer an apprenticeship to help with this. Um, they're getting harder to find. Different people have them. I don't have any inf information on who offers apprenticeships. I just know different companies have offered them in the past. They'll offer an apprenticeship for you to get your AMP, and then once you have your AMP, they bring you on as a direct hire, whether that be somewhere like American. And I'm not saying American does it, but somebody like American Airlines or Delta Airlines or whoever it may be. So don't overlook apprenticeships. Those are always an option. Now on to some of the frequently asked questions that I get on my channel. Who can be an AMP? And the truth is there is actually not really a limit on who can be an AMP. There's nothing in the regulation that says that you have to be an American citizen. There's nothing that says you have to be free of felonies or criminal charges. All it says is that you must be 18 years of age or older. You must read, write, speak the English language. And that's about it. Now, the privileges of your AMP is where it gets sticky. But if you are in a different country, if you are not in America, maybe you're, well, not Canadian because we have a bilateral agreement, but maybe you're in Mexico, maybe you're in France, maybe you're in London, I don't know, and you want to get your airframe and power plant certificate, you could come to the United States. You could go through a 147 program. You could go through the whole process of testing, and you can even receive your airframe and power plant certificate. And that goes for anyone outside the United States. However, According to the regulation, in order to exercise the privileges of those AMP certificate, you would have to be working on a U.S. registered aircraft outside of the United States. So that would be a U.S. registered aircraft in Mexico, in London, in Africa, wherever it is that you are. But you might not really care about that because you just want the AMP as a qualification to better your employment in the country that you are in. Like I said, there's also no rule that says that you have to have a clean driving record and no drug history or anything like that. Those things may make it harder for you to find employment, certainly. But I've had plenty of students who had prior convictions that were felonies who got their airframe and power plant certificate and are now working in aviation. You are going to struggle to get a security clearance, which means that your job availability might be slightly limited, but you can still get an AMP and there's still plenty of money to be made out there should you choose to get your AMP. Like I said, the only requirement is that you have to be 18 years of age or older and read, write, and speak the English language. That doesn't mean that you can't start before you're 18 years of age or older. We have plenty of high school students through a dual credit program we have here go through our program and get some of their classes taken, but they don't actually certify for their AMP until they're 18 years old. But they've got some of the general classes, some of the airframe classes, or whatever it does or whatever it is. So if you graduated high school early and this is something you want to start, you're welcome to do that. And it's actually the same with a pilot certificate. You can start flight training long before, I think it's 16, but don't quote me on that. You can actually start fl flight training long before your 16th birthday. You just can't officially get your pilot's license until you're 16. It might actually be 15 or 14. I don't know. Like I said, don't quote me on that. I don't have that regulation in front of me. I'm better at mechanics because this is what I do. So there you go, everybody. That's pretty much going to do it all for this video. I'm going to get back in the swing of videos here very soon. Like I, th like I said, things have been very, very busy. I'm not making excuses for myself. It is what it is. I haven't been giving the Discord the attention it deserves. I have definitely been neglecting my emails. Um, I keep looking at them, but I never have the time to respond. It's a whole thing. It's on me. I'm a terrible human being. What can I say? But if you like the video, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, join the Discord, follow me on Instagram, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.